Hey everyone, welcome once again to my channel. My name is Arun Thukral. I'm a life and a leadership coach. And today we are going to learn a very special episode about Gallup Strength Finder or Clifton Strength Finder, which is run by Gallup. I also hope that by this time you also would have watched my previous video because I know you are preparing for your Gallup in interview, which is likely to take place sooner or later. So if you have watched all those videos, you have understood about how to answer certain questions, what are the ways to attempt a Gallup assessment. Today, I'm going to tell you about Clifton Strengths and why it is important, why it is important for your preparation for the next Gallup round. The reason is that Clifton Strength or the Gallup Strength Finder assessment is generally done for the internal employees to see what are their strength areas and how that an organization can leverage their strengths over a period of time when they spend in the organization. But do you know that this Gallup Strength Finder was built based on all the previous Gallup interviews that has gone by, various consultations and various interviews that has been done by Gallup as an organization with different HR leaders and other business leaders. In fact, this assessment was developed by the chairman of Gallup by the name Don Clifton in the year 2001. And since 2001 and till today, more than 26 million people have already underwent this assessment. This is such a powerful assessment that one can really map about the behaviors and the relevant competencies of an individual who is likely to perform in the job. Now, what is important in this session that I'm going to take is, I'm going to talk about the four important Clifton strengths and what are the total set of competencies that are underlined each strength that they tend to evaluate. In this video, we are also going to understand what each strength means and then you have to correlate it with your day-to-day -day experience in your job that is going to help you to prepare for your next Gallup interview. Well, at the same time, I also would request you to like and subscribe this channel if you really find this content relevant and making sense to you. Now, before we go into the real topic and understand what are those four strengths, I want you to first understand what is a strength. As per Clifton, Strength is a function of talent multiplied by investment. Now, in very simple words, what is talent? Talent is a very natural way, the way we think, the way we feel, and the way we act. And what is investment? Investment is the time that you spend on developing your strengths, how much you become efficient in that. And that's how you are able to showcase your strength which means you are able to do certain things in the highest performing way in most of the occasion. So if you really want to build your strengths, you really need to develop your talent and invest time on it. That is the reason that when Gallup assessments are conducted, they want to find strengths in you. What are your strengths? And by the way, you answers, by the way, you share examples, by the way, you share the context in responding to the Gallup questions. They figure out your strengths based on the Clifton Strength model. So let's get into what exactly are these strengths, what are they evaluating, and what exactly each strength mean to them and mean to you in your day-to-day -day work. Now, there are four domains of strength that Clifton Strength Finder works upon. Number one is called executing or execution. How do you execute things? Second is influencing. How do you influence people without authority or with authority? People reporting to you, your peers, your customers, your bosses, and even your subordinates. Next is relationship building. As we all work in the environment to deal with people, how do we build relationship? Because once you have got good relationships, you are able to make a long lasting outcomes in the business that you do. And the last one is strategic thinking, which means how visionary you are, how 
conceptually and strategically you can think of options available to you. So in very simple word, executing means accomplishing things and getting things done when it comes to influencing others to reach the goals so that people are aligned towards you. And relationship building is simply but concerned and interested in the way people are affected. How do you deal with them? How do you talk to them? Do you really nurture a relationship or you destroy the relationship? It matters how you deal with them. And last but not the least is making sense of things in terms of creating vision. That means what are the alternative ways that can help you to reach the goal? And that's where strategic thinking comes. So primarily, these are the four areas where your Gallup assessment or the Gallup Strength Finder focuses upon. Now, let's go deep into each part that which are those total 34 competencies which are give, given divided into these four important strengths. And what does it mean? Because once you know the meaning of it and what do you what are they trying to figure out, you can answer any question that comes in your gallop. Now, let's look at the first in execution, execution that is called as achiever. Second is arranger. Third is belief. Fourth is consistency. Fifth is uh, deliberative. Sixth is discipline. Seventh is focus. Eighth is responsibility. And the ninth one is restorative. Now, we will understand these competencies. What does it mean? As we know, achiever simply means the stamina, the hard work, and how you stay busy, how you keep yourself engaged throughout the day that helps you remain focused in achieving your goals. Now, think about all the examples in your life that if you are an organized person, are you staying busy right from the morning till evening? Do you have the stamina, you have the power to ensure that you deliver results on time? Next is arranger. Are you organized and flexible? I'm sure you, when you will search the Gallup questions, you will see some questions coming up. How organized are you from a scale of one to 10 if 10 is high? Or they may ask you, how do you plan your day? And that's how, these questions will start coming out to see these competencies. Belief, another very important area in belief is strong on values that don't change with situations or with people. So how strong you are on your values. So values could be integrity. Values could be taking challenges. Values could be uh, staying focused in situations of distractions. There could be many different values. Confidence is another value that you bring in when the situations are not in your favor. So how do you exhibit that and stay on it even if things are not on your side? Consistency, that means how do you exhibit fairness in treating others? Deliberative, which means take serious care in making decisions or choices. Now, when was the last time that you took a decision that was tough? Now, this is where what kind of choices that you make, what kind of alternatives that you think, how do you analyze the data? How do you do critical thinking in making decisions? That is means deliberative. Then comes discipline, enjoy routine and structure. That means you follow certain patterns due to which you are able to showcase that you are a disciplined personality. Focus, which means take direction, follow through and make corrections if needed. Which means you are steadily focused with discipline in achieving your objectives. That means take serious care in making decisions or choices. Responsibility, because let's say uh, a Gallup question, when was the last time, uh, or let's say, do you, do you take uh, situations in hand when things are out of control? That means, or, or does your boss gives you uh, or trust you when it comes to giving task. Now that comes with responsibility because you take serious care in making decision and choices and that's how you are able to win the trust of your manager. Restorative, being good at analyzing what's wrong and then resolving it. So look at these nine important competencies that are coming under execution. So now think about in your role, what you are doing when it comes to execution. Do you exhibit these competencies? Because they are going to check 
in the Gallup Strength Finder by giving you two questions that are coming in form of two statements. The one that you agree or will, will reflect one of those competencies or strengths under that. Now let's look at the second one. That is influencing. Now what does influencing means here? What are the strengths that comes? Number one, activator. Number two, command. Number three, communication. Number four, competition. Maximizer. Self-assurance. Significance. And who? Now we'll, we are going to now understand each of them that how these strengths are relevant in conducting or influencing others at work area. Number one, activator, which means make things happen, thought into action, which means you are a highly result-oriented person. In spite of different adverse situations, you make things happen. So you are not just thinking, but you are a person who is believing in action. That is why you are an activator. So in Gallup, you get questions like, do you outperform others? Make things happen. Okay. Command which means present, take control, and make decisions. That means you remain present to the situation, you take control, and make decisions. Communication, find it easy to put thoughts into words. That means how do you articulate? How do you express a long topic into short words, but still making sense to the other person? That is, in simple word, is communication. Then comes competition which means measure their progress against the performance of others. Do you compete? Only this question will come. So whether you say yes or no, and if you say yes, then bring an example because this is what they want to see in competition. Maximizer, which who seeks to transform something strong into something superb, which means how do you transform people? Are you a maximizer? So somebody says, uh, a question may come, uh, Tell me about your significant achievements. And now your significant achievement is has to be significant. How significant is in terms of either the, the business that you do or the biggest award that you received or a promotion that you have. Self-insurance, that means confident and having very high self-awareness. Now, if you know what are your strengths, what are your developmental needs, it very well shows that you are highly confident. Okay, significance, independent and wanting to be recognized for good work. Now, if you are independent and you want to excel in everything that you do, how do you get better at your work is something they look into. So think about some examples where you have been able to showcase that you were able to turn around the situations and that's how you have been recognized for a work. Woo, love to meet new people and win over them which means you love to speak to strangers, you love in, to be in their company, and that shows your adaptability, your trust building stuff that you have in wooing others. That's how you are able to influence. Next is building relationships. Now, what are the important strengths that comes in building relationship? Adaptability, connectedness, developer, empathy, harmony, includer, individualization, positivity, and these all strengths are coming together in building relationship. Now, you look at this as also an area where in your current role, if you are able to exhibit these kind of strengths, you are definitely having very strong relationship. That means adaptability. You can go with the flow, take things as they come, rather than saying that I can only work in this environment, I cannot work in that environment. Second is connectedness, has faith in linking between things and it all happens for a reason. That means you're able to get closer to people, take things as they are coming, accept them and build on from there what you have thought. And that's how you are able to connect the dots of being there in that situation or in that role that you are in. Developer, recognizes and cultivates the potential in others. Now think about that, did you motivate anyone? A question can come. Or how did you develop your team? 
Now, these are the areas that you need to think about examples that how do you develop potential in others. Empathy, one of the very powerful part of communication, can sense the feeling of others by walking in their shoes. How did you help someone when somebody was not able to achieve the goals? Did you motivate anyone or do you motivate people? If you say yes, use empathy as one of the reasons in your examples to showcase that you are able to exhibit this competency of building relationships. Then comes harmony. Seek consensus, doesn't like conflict. Now, that means you listen to people well, you understand their problems, and then you build consensus in achieving the objective. That means you are a leader who tries to take everyone together by not getting into conflict. Includer, accepting of others and seeks ways to not let them feel left out. As I said in the previous one, adaptability, go with the flow, accept as people as they are, rather than thinking about as you are, then it is not possible. You cannot have the similar clones of you in the organization. So you need to be adaptable to accept and then include them. That is another word people use, diversity and inclusion. People go for diversity, but they don't include them. And when they include them, they become a part of relationship building competences. Individualization, intrigued by unique qualities of each person. Because of these qualities, we all are unique. But how do you appreciate the uniqueness of others and of yourself and create something more meaningful in the work environment? Positivity. Now, what does it mean? Enthusiasm that is often contagious and upbeat. How do you do that? How do you look at things in a in a larger perspective rather than in a myopic perspective, then your vision of doing things become bigger and better. Relator, which means deep satisfaction in working hard with others to achieve. That means you are a person who believe in relationship building. And if you are able to do so, things are going to be in your favor. Now comes the last one that is strategic thinking. Now, what it comes to strategic thinking, the strengths that are counted in this is analytical. One of the very critical skills is you need to have a good analytical skills. Contextualize. Then comes futuristic. Ideation. Input. Intellect, intellection or intellectual. Learner. Now, let's look at Analytical searches for reasons and causes. That means you take a deep dive in knowing things and understand what are the root cause for a particular situation or for a particular result that has come. So if you are analytical with deep thinking and critical thinking, you can find out those areas. They understand the present by researching its history. That is where they set the context from where they are coming from. Inspired by the future and what it could be. That shows that you have a very futuristic world and you are a strategic thinker. Ideation, the finding the connection between seeming disparate phenomena, which means you are able to connect the dots based on your analysis, based on when I say disparate phenomena means what is the existing methodology to do work and how do you transform it to the next level? And that can only happen when you can find connections in doing so. Then comes input. Have a carving to know more, often collect and archives info. That means you are able to have that inquisitiveness, curiosity to know more. Intellection, introspective and appreciate debate and discussion. That means you're open to listen, you're open to develop new ideas, and that's how you are able to achieve things. Learner, which means you have a great desire to learn and continuously improve. So I remember uh, one of the questions that had come in Gallup, and it says that, have you done enough? A lot of people say yes. And that's where the learner attitude starts to fall in. The best of mine is yet to come because I'm a continuous learner and I want to improve upon as I move on. And last is strategic, which simply means often create alternative ways to proceed 
and quickly spot the patterns. Now, these are some of the diamonds that I'm sharing with you are so relevant in your Gallup preparation because all these competencies are going to get evaluated when you are going to answer your questions in Gallup. Mind you, as I said in the beginning, this assessment has been created based on all the previous Gallup interviews that has gone by and their assessments are happening based on the competencies which are defined for a role. And with the examples and the questions they ask you, they want to know whether you really fit it into the scale, uh, whatever they have said between one to five or A, B, C, whether you really fall in their top scale by answering the right question can help you to achieve your next job when you clear a Gallup round. So I hope this Clifton strength or a Gallup strength finder would have now been more clearer to you what exactly they want to achieve, how they want to achieve from these 34 strengths. And as I said, this is one of the very popular assessment that has been in practice for the past 25 years, and it's still going very, very strong. Well, thank you very much for watching me and uh, taking this session with me. I look forward to your feedback and comment, whatever that you have learned. And if still certain things are not clear, feel free to write me on my email ID, arun.thukral at hcnconnect.in, and I'll personally respond to you. Thank you. Thank you for watching me.